Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine. In this video, I'm going to show an extended example using multiple concepts, but focused on the ways in which we can work with the action macro to change the default action a user or player will have with links in a story. So we have seen now across multiple videos how we can combine multiple concepts in different ways. I have used and shown in other examples how we can use tags as part of passages to change how we run things within a story. If we have multiple variables we want to set up and they need to be set up before the starting passage, we can use the startup tag. This allows us to set it on a particular passage as I've done here using a plus tag right here and I've selected startup and we have variables. I've set up these variables using the startup tag. I can also, when I'm using enchantments, which work with changer macros, set up something like styles or whatever we want to name our passage and use it as part of footers, which means it will be applied at the end of every passage to that passage. Here I have a number of different enchantments using the enchant macro and applying to particular different sets of symbols right here, each of which has their own collection of changer macros. And remember how changer macros work is they can be changed or combined together as part of an enchantment. Or using the change macro, we can target a particular hook or target a word or phrase using enchant. So I'm applying multiple enchantments, four different ones, that are applying to a completely different passage. Or in fact will be applied to every passage if I want that to happen, but I only have a single passage in this story as part of the starting passage over here. So I'm using the footer tag with enchantments, and I'm using variables right here as part of startup. So all of my variables are in place, all of my styles are in one place, and this is a useful pattern for those getting started with Harlow and especially trying to contain what can be very complex ideas when working with multiple macros. So let's dive into start, which is much more complex, sadly. So let's, th let's look at the way this works. So over here, I have a named hook called score right here is the name. It applies to this hook right here, which contains the word score and the value of the variable score. Now remember over here in variables, score will be set to initially zero startup. This passage right here will be run before the starting passage. So the story variable score will be started zero. So coming back over here to start, we will immediately see score zero. And then I have three different link macros that have actions with them. So remember the action macro allows us to change the default action for that link, for either a link or anything producing a link such as the link macro. In this case, I'm saying, Whenever a mouse over happens, and a mouse over happens when the cursor is over something and then leaves it, so it immediately is over, or as soon as it comes in, it triggers. And I'm saying for this link, for this link, and for this link, use mouse over for all of these. Inside of its associated hook, so all this code right here, I'm saying change the score by some amount. So for 100, 100, by 200, 200, 300, 300, and 400, 400. Then I'm using a pattern I've shown in a previous video of working with the replace macro. The replace macro can be incredibly powerful for updating things like statistics and scores and other things to immediately show a user or player some change in some amount. So if we are changing the score, we can immediately update the score. For changing other things like statistics or de decreasing health points or all kinds of other things, the replace macro can be incredibly powerful for those. In this case, I'm targeting this up here. So I'm saying, hey, replace it with score, score. There it is, exactly the same. So whenever the mouse over happens with this link, one, update the score, two, immediately replace it up here and show us this update. And then I'm doing the exact same thing three other times and just changing the corresponding value. Now, initially looking at this passage, it may not appear as we think it will. And the reason why I say that is because I have a whole other passage called styles, which has enchantments. One of the things I have done is shown a pattern of establishing all of the code in one place and our enchantments in another using the footer tag to apply the enchantments after the code. 
one of the ways we can approach designing things within Harlow is we can have our styles in one place and our code or potentially our content in another. And of course we can mix those. And in fact, I'm using both kind of parallel patterns at the same time. I've got my variables set up, then I've got my content, and then I've got my enchantments. And that could be one way to do this, or I could have put all the enchantments into this passage. Again, there are always multiple ways to do things within Harlow, which makes it exciting. So, okay. What this says, test your aim. We have four different links. These all use mouse over. They all correspondingly change score by some amount and then update this text up here. Let's play this to see what this looks like. So if we build and play, this looks very, very different. Notice the enchantments at play. 100 is very big, 200 is smaller, 300 is smaller, 400 is smaller than that. But if I mouse over, notice the score changed, 300, 400 right here up to a thousand. I'm going to refresh this because I did it very quickly. So mouse over 100, boop, mouse over 400, boop, mouse over 300, and mouse over 200. Notice in each time it changed and correspondingly disappeared because that's what we asked to do as part of that link. So it ran this chunk of code right here, which adjusted the score and replaced this up here and then did nothing else and just, re just disappeared. Remember, as we work with Link and its sister macros, that they all do slightly different things, which are incredibly important as part of our design within these stories. The Link macro only runs once. If we wanted to run it multiple times, we would need Link rerun, which is a slightly different macro. In this case, I only wanted it to run once as part of this example. So the link appears once, we do mouse over, as soon as the mouse enters the area, it disappears, it runs the code, and the score is updated. And we have kind of a target practice type thing, which you've courts, court, with each corresponding thing being much smaller. So 400 down here, 200 is much bigger up here, 300 and 100. Of course, since we're dealing with mouse over, I can just go and just run the mouse all over the page right here and collect everything I need to collect. But potentially that could be a way to design things, is working with mouse over to move the cursor over something, collect something, or change something, which is the entire point, changing something as part of using this action macro. So a kind of interesting example, setting up not only enchantments, things we have seen across other videos, using changer macros, but also working with, again, action and links as another type of changer action, in this case, a literal changer action, changing something within Harlow. So we're creating links, using the action macro to change the default action, here using mouse over instead of the normal click, and then using the replace macro to update some score and something somewhere else, a pattern I've shown in previous videos, and combining it all with working with the footer and startup tags to allow us to better organize everything within a story. Our variables are in one place, our styles are in another, and then as we write the story, we need those things, we can display them, include the contents of one passage in another, or potentially, again, use the footer tag to achieve the same effect. Thanks for watching.